This is one of Luisa's paintings. It's called Efialtes, and it depicts mermaids swimming forward into some blue dreams. Many of us know that diseases like Alzheimer's are ca caused by misfolded proteins in the brain, but you may not know that the brain also has electrical rhythms, much like music. So in Act Two, rhythms and transitions, you'll be hearing from a scientist who studies just that, UCSF researcher Dr. Kamalini Ranasinghe. Then we'll hear the world premiere of a very special piece of music, which was composed based on a real EEG recording as a collaboration between the SF Conservatory of Music, Technology, and Applied Composition, as well as UCSF neuroscientists. Act two will round out with a talk from UCSF's Leah Grinberg from the Global Brain Health Institute, who will teach us about exactly how the brain moves between these two worlds asleep and awake, and how that toggling between those two worlds can become disrupted in diseases like Alzheimer's. Please enjoy Act Two. Hello, good evening to you all. I'm Kamalini Ranasinghe. I'm an assistant professor of neurology and a neuroscientist from the Memory and Aging Center, UCSF. And in the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going, to t I'm going to be talking about the rhythms in our brains and what happens to them when we are awake and when we go to sleep and in diseases like Alzheimer's disease. Let me begin with the story. This is a story about a dream. In the year 1891, a young officer in the Prussian army received a letter from his sister in which she wrote that she saw in a dream that her brother was falling off the horse. As it happened, the officer did fall off the horse and he realized that this incident roughly took place around the same time that his sister had this dream. So this gave a lasting impression to him and a great motivation to understand how the human brain works. His name was Hans Berger. Later, he became a neuropsychiatrist in Berlin and developed a machine to record the human brain waves. Today, we call it EEG, or electroencephalography. At the UCSF Memory and Aging Center, we not only use EEG, but another technique called MEG, or magnetoencephalography, which is recording the magnetic field generated by these neurons firing in our brains. Compared to 20 sensors in an EEG, an MEG has about 300 channels. So it allows us to record these brain waves with very, very precise anatomical details. So we know where they are coming from, and when they go wrong, we know where they go wrong. These wavy patterns we see in an EEG or an MEG, we call them neural oscillations. And what they tell us is the electrical activity generated by millions and millions of neurons firing inside our brains. When we are awake and active, these neural oscillations are fast. And when we go to sleep, they become slow and large delta waves appear in these recordings. It's very important that these millions of neuronal activity is properly coordinated for the best human cognition and behavior to manifest. Neural oscillations, as we know about them today, is a mechanism that our brains have to coordinate these neuronal activity patterns. To put it in very simple terms, two neurons that are firing in the same cycle, they are better coordinated in a much more effective interaction happens between them than those neurons who fire off cycle. So just like a conductor brings temporal coordination to an orchestra, neural oscillations bring temporal coordination to neuronal firing. So when neurons fire together, the synchrony is high. When they fire at random, the synchrony is low. But just like in an instrument, 
we have to have the perfect tuning for the best cognition and behavior to manifest. It shouldn't be too high or too low. Much of what happens to our brain rhythms when neurons die, we've learned from patients with Alzheimer's disease, where neurons die and neural circuits become degenerate. What we found was that in patients with Alzheimer's disease, neuronal synchrony becomes either too low or too high, and in specific brain regions. For example, in the posterior part of the brain, the synchrony becomes too low, and in the frontal and the parietal parts of the brain, the synchrony becomes too high. Alzheimer's disease is a disease of two proteins, amyloid beta that gets accumulated outside the neurons, and tau, which gets accumulated inside the neurons. So are these proteins associated with altered rhythms? Indeed, that's what we found. We found that the, uh, the neuronal reductions, synchrony reductions that happens with this disease is highly associated with tau accumulations, whereas synchrony increases that happens in Alzheimer's disease is tightly coupled with amyloid accumulations. Let me tell you a little bit more about sleep and memory. Although we do not know exactly how the memories are formed in our brains, we do know that our brains replay the neural circuits when we go to sleep. Those neural circuits that are activated when we are awake and when we learn things. So this happens as a crosstalk between hippocampus and those cortical slow waves that gets generated when we are at sleep. Those large delta waves that I showed you when the rhythms become slow, this is a very important mechanism that happens in our brains when we are at sleep and it allows these neural connections to be stre strengthened to learn these experiences and consolidate our memories. So let me tell you a little bit more about these neurons which producing these oscillatory rhythms in our brains. There are millions and millions of neurons in our brains connected to each other via tiny little junctions called synapses. These neurons are either excitatory or inhibitory. Excitatory neurons are neurons that stimulate or enhance the activity of other neurons that they are connected to. Inhibitory neurons, on the other hand, are neurons that inhibit or shuts down the activity that they are connected to. Neural oscillations are produced as a complex combination of the activity of these excitatory and inhibitory neurons in our brains. So which ones go wrong in Alzheimer's disease? What we found was that they both go wrong. Specifically, the excitatory abnormalities that are associated with tau accumulations, whereas inhibitory abnormalities are associated with amyloid accumulations. So this abnormal excitatory and inhibitory neuronal firing in our brains gives rise to what we call excitatory inhibitory imbalance. The classic manifestation of an excitatory inhibitory imbalance is a seizure, and indeed, with our work at UCSF, we found out that patients with Alzheimer's disease have a very high incidence of subclinical seizures happening in their brains. These are subclinical, so patients do not know that they're happening. They don't feel anything. There are no clinical manifestations, but these abnormal electrical activity happening inside their brains. And it happens about 42 in, in about 42% of patients with Alzheimer's disease compared to 11% in normal healthy elderly. Not only that, patients who do have these conditions, they progress much faster in their clinical decline compared to those who don't. So in summary, I've been telling you all about brain rhythms and how they go out of tune in conditions like Alzheimer's disease. That also gives us great hope to understand them better. Let me emphasize a few key concepts that we've learned from this research. One is that measuring these brain waves gives us a very fine tool to quantify the functional deficit that happens in our brains in these conditions like Alzheimer's disease and neurodegenerative conditions where neurons die. It becomes all the more exciting and interesting to uh, measure these brain waves 
so that we can understand the exact deficit and find out who, which patients are going to respond to the novel treatments that are coming up. And also in the era of new blood-based biomarkers where we can potentially identify Alzheimer's disease in a blood test, it's important to identify the exact functional deficit in them. This will be our future research at the Marian Aging Center. And let me end with a story. This is a story I read and written by a poet called Mahagama Sekara from an exotic island called Sri Lanka where I happen to be from. <laughs> Sleepless in the night, I listen to the darkness. The world sleeps still and silent. Nothing can be heard but silence. I listen better. I realize that. We breathe in and out into a rhythm. The chest rises and falls into a rhythm. The pulse beats into a rhythm. Rhythm is repetition. An event that happened once happens again in a pattern, day and night, spring and summer, high and low tides. A musician plays his rhythm into a tune. An artist draws his rhythm into a picture. I wonder if life, the universe, and the rhythm are one and the same. Though written in 1974, I think it's a poetic expression of why we are able to play brain rhythms into music. Did you know that today what you heard when you entered into the auditorium was music that's created from an EEG from one of our patients? Well, it was. Thank you very much.